Of the 15,000 murders that happen in America each year, one in 10 are committed by women. I shot my husband. I'm in here for shooting my husband. Most of these cases are the result of drink and drugs, mental illness, or marital abuse. I pushed him against the wall and he, oh my God. But there's a certain breed of murderess who's more devious and unusual than the rest. Everyone knows I would never hurt that man in any way. They make up less than 5% of female killers. Some call them black widows, and their motive is money. I wouldn't have killed him because that would be cutting off my nose to spite my face. But even against compelling evidence, they deny all guilt. I honestly can't look at you and believe a word that's come out of your mouth. Have you have no lied heart. and lied and lied no and heart. lied. You can't tell me that I would kill a man in the only carpeted room in the house. I mean, come on, I'm a woman. At the highest security women's prison in Texas, resides one of the state's most notorious murderers, 53-year-old Celeste Beard Johnson. I wish that I would have done a lot of things different. Yes, I do, but I, I finally, maybe within the last year, stopped beating myself up because I can't do anything about, about what happened. In 2003, she was found guilty of killing her millionaire husband and sentenced to life in prison. I just can't believe that I'm going to be stuck here for 40 years for something I didn't do. I mean, I just, I just have to believe that that's not going to happen because if I do, I might as well just die. Celeste's story captured the imagination of the world's media and spawned two best-selling books. Susie Spencer spent two years researching one of them. I combed through the medical records. I sat through the trial testimony. But I did not get the story of Celeste Beard until I met her. All of a sudden, I got it. Because she's charming, she's fun, she's lively, and she tells you just enough truth mixed in with her lies that they become believable. She's fascinating. This is what comes up when you Google me. Um, Celeste. 59-year-old Tracy Tarleton has spent 10 years in prison for shooting and killing Stephen Beard. She's serving the remaining 12 years of her sentence on parole. I think that some people believe that this could never happen to them. But I can absolutely tell you that I would have told you I would never kill somebody at one point, you know, and, and, and I did. Tracy and Celeste met in March 1999 at St. David's, a top Austin psychiatric hospital. Both women were receiving treatment for depression. You know, at the time that I met Celeste, I was at a very low ebb. I was ripe for the picking, you know. Tracy had taken responsibility for Stephen Beard's murder, but a newspaper article about her ex-lover Celeste getting married made her think again. It was a short period of time since we had ended it. And it became starkly clear just in an instant. She had lied to me, I had been manipulated, I had believed her, and I had shot this guy. Now, I knew, for no reason but for his money. With this realization, Tracy approached state prosecutors and offered to testify against Celeste in return for a shorter sentence. The eyes of Austin, Texas are on one place the courthouse where Celeste Beard is about to go on trial for the murder of her husband, Steve. This was a tremendous story in the media. You have this millionaire. He was murdered by his wife's lesbian lover. 
You have the issues of money, you have the issues of sex, you have some madness involved in this case. You have all that swirled in with family conflict. It's almost like something William Shakespeare would have written about. The most powerful impression is made by Celeste herself, who enters the courtroom to gasps of surprise. They open the door and she comes in, hobbles in on these crutches. I fainted in, in the county hospital and my foot stuck to the concrete. And so when I spun around, I got a spiral fracture in my tibia. Right before the trial started, I believe a doctor wanted to take the cast off. And she said, wait, 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 don't, don't, don't. Let me talk to my attorney first. It was like she thought that that cast would get sympathy. The prosecution's star witness was Tracy Talton. Show us how you shot. <clears throat> I walked down to the end of the bed, and I saw him, and I pulled up, and I shot him. What did you say about her suggestion that she shoot Steve Beer? I said, I don't want to do this. She said, and there's nothing left. You know, I, might as well, I might as well just take it right now and shoot myself. And I, I said, fine, let's go. I'll do it. But just as powerful was testimony from Celeste's own daughters who told the court how she treated her husband. I mean, she called him a fat fuck. That was the main thing she called him, called him a pig. And she talked about how she hoped that Stephen Beard would just die. Why didn't he just die? So she could go on living the kind of life that she wanted to live without him. He let you into his home, loved you, honored, obeyed you, and you murdered him. You are guilty. The fact that those girls testified against their own mother is huge because they realized finally what she actually was. She was a cold, calculated person who pushed people to their limits. But it was a series of phone calls recorded by her daughters that lifted a veil on Celeste's manipulative ways. To hear her threaten them constantly, repeatedly, through tape after tape after tape. And then to have a tape where Celeste says, calmly, I hired someone to kill Tracy. The call was uh, manipulated, it was altered. They didn't even play the rest of the phone calls or the whole thing. That is your voice talking on the phone? Well, right? yes, it is. You heard her. It was edited. It doesn't matter what the facts are to Celeste. Do you think she'll ever admit what she's done? No. She does not strike me as the kind of person that would ever take responsibility for her actions. I think that she was just, by nature, a cruel, manipulative person. So-called black widows, like Celeste, tend to murder their husbands or lovers, but their victims aren't always as familiar. In the state of Florida, a woman is serving a life sentence for killing a stranger she befriended for his money. Like Celeste, Doris D.D. Moore denies all guilt. I used to think that everybody that was in prison deserved to be here for whatever they were here for, and that we had a bunch of murderers that we needed to keep out of society, and there were some just bad people here. <laughs> but I learned that there are a lot of people here for stupid reasons. In 2012, Dee Dee Moore was found guilty of murdering a man who'd won $30 million on the lottery. The verdict was unanimous. In my case, none of my facts came out, or I would not be here. If my facts came out, I would have never got convicted. I've been in law enforcement for just over 18 years now, and of all the suspects, defendants, um, individuals that I've encountered, there will never be another defendant like Dee Dee Moore. She's a pathological liar. Dee Dee Moore is a very slick individual. She knew what she was doing. She was very charismatic. She was intelligent, but she was also greedy. And her web of spinning lies caught up with her. It was at this convenience store that Abraham Shakespeare bought the lotto ticket that changed his life. 
but it's a life that officials now fear may have ended in foul play. Over the next seven months, police continually look to D.D. Moore for answers. He is gone, okay? He is seven, he wants to be missing. Seven months ago, he has not had a word to anyone. He wants to be missing. She, she told different people that, he, one, he was on a cruise. Um, one story she provided was in the Bahamas on a vacation. Another story she had mentioned that he was somewhere in the Caribbean receiving treatment for AIDS. He wanted to pretend he was dying of AIDS so that he doesn't have to pay child support and people won't look for him if he's dying of AIDS. Why did he tell anybody else that? Did he? You're not going to believe me. You're going to think I really freaking hurt this man. I honestly, I, I honestly can't look at you and believe a word that's come out of your mouth. Have you have no lied hurt. and lied and lied no and lied. Where? Where's he at? Please, Diddy. She was very arrogant and cocky. Obviously, it wasn't going to work, but uh, I think in her mind, she thought that she could continue to pull one over on us. Authorities in Florida have filed first-degree murder charges against Doris Deedee Moore in connection with the death of Abraham Shakespeare. The Hillsborough County office says the remains do belong to the missing lottery winner. They found Shakespeare's body buried under a concrete slab. On January the 28th, 2010, the remains of missing lottery winner Abraham Shakespeare were unearthed on D.D. Moore's property. What they discovered showed how far she had gone to conceal the crime. He was found buried pretty deep, about nine feet below the surface. He was in a pair of red denim jeans, uh, kind of a bomber style jacket and a white t-shirt, but he was missing the shoes that he had on and also all metal from the jacket to include the zippers and the buttons and zippers in his jeans were cut out. She had removed those to avoid metal detection. The evidence against Dee Dee was damning. Two bullets that matched her gun were found in Shakespeare's chest. His blood was on her carpet. And a digger used to dig the hole found in nearby storage. Dee Dee was immediately brought in for questioning. You don't protect me. Right. You, 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 you don't care if I'm killed. You don't care. You don't think happening. it's a big deal. You think I've done this. You think Dee. I took a gun and shot somebody. Dee, look at the bright side. If you can convince me, you can convince anybody. But you think I took a gun and shot Am this I right? man. If you can convince Hang me, on. you can convince anyone. I have a homicide in my county. Mm -hmm. And I have a body recovered, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I have a pretty good idea of what happened. Now it's time to lay it out. I did not kill that man. I interviewed her, basically confronting her. We sat with her for probably three plus hours. Now Dee Dee had a new story, that Abraham was killed in a drug deal gone wrong. Two murderous thugs killed Abraham Shakespeare, but they're gonna leave you a witness alive. Dee Dee said Abraham pulled a gun on one of the dealers and a man called Ronald shot him. When confronted with the fact that the projectiles taken out of his body matched the firearm that she owned and purchased, she then changed the story that her safe was open and this drug dealer, Ronald, was able to grab this firearm. She would change her story on the spot. She would almost lose herself in the statements that she was providing you can almost see the wheels turning in her head. She would look off into, into space and then come up with another excuse. Ronald didn't exist, it was a made up character. You try to tell you the cops, these people exist and they laugh at you. They think you're crazy. Didi Moore blamed everybody, everybody for the murder of Abraham Shakespeare except herself. She said that this fictitious, drug dealer did it, the undercover officer did it, um, and even her own son. Dee, this isn't one you can talk your way out of. Police have their own version of what happened to Abraham Shakespeare. We feel on the night of April 6, 2009, Abraham started to confront Dee Dee Moore about not having the money accessible to him. And the confrontation ensues and ultimately he's he shot and killed over the money. Are you gonna miss your home? 
Yeah, but I miss it, but life goes on. We found his remains still in the same clothing that he was last seen in in a video that she had recorded. It's all over. It's all over. Dee Dee Moore will spend the rest of her life in prison after a jury handed down their verdict. Moore is guilty of killing Abraham Shakespeare to get and keep his lottery winnings. On the 10th of December, 2012, Dee Dee Moore was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. You're probably the most manipulative person that this court has seen. Abraham Shakespeare was your prey and your victim. Money was the root of the evil that you brought to Abraham. I, I'm not a manipulator type person. I didn't deserve this. Being charged with something I didn't do. I was really innocent. So I was really upset with him. Since being in prison, Dee Dee has changed her story again. How, how did Abraham die? Who killed him? I don't know how Abraham died. I know what it says in the police report, but I really wasn't there. Celeste will be eligible for parole in 2043, when she'll be 80 years old. If she doesn't admit her guilt, she'll spend the rest of her life behind bars.